Okay, so we have two waves that we're going to learn, the sine wave and the cosine wave. Okay, so the sine wave and the cosine wave. So I'm going to give you what the parent function looks like. So y equals sine x. Draw this on top of the page if you want to. Flip it back. Okay, so the sine wave and the cosine wave are actually the same wave, just one is shifted a little bit different than the other. So how the sine wave works, it starts at zero, zero. Okay. So some of you guys may have noticed that when we were doing chapter five, when we were doing finding angles, all the numbers were under one. Okay, so all the decimals, like 0 0.866, 0 0.707, uh, 0 0.5. So when we're finding angles, all the numbers were under 1. Okay, they were between 0 and 1. So when you actually find those points, we're finding the angles, it actually creates numbers between positive 1 and negative 1. Okay, so sine starts at 0, 0. Then it goes upwards to 90 and 1. Then after it hits 1, it starts coming down. Okay, it comes back down to the equation of the axis, which we'll talk about in a second, or the x-axis. Then it goes below, below zero, to negative one, and then back up to the x-axis at 360 degrees. this part off, I just want to explain it. Okay, so sine starts at the x-axis, goes up to 1, back to the x-axis, down to negative 1, and then back to the x-axis. Okay, this is a periodic function. What does a periodic function mean? When you did 6.1 yesterday. Six point one periodic function. What was it? What does it mean? Is it periodic? It repeats itself, right? So this would then continue up and down. It would keep going. Okay, you don't have to copy that out. So it keeps going positive, 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 and it also continues uh, negative as well. So this wave would just keep going, keep going to infinity. Okay, there's no end value for it. But we're going to focus on just one cycle at a time. Okay, so we're just gonna look at one, one period. Okay, so when we learn the cast rule, this first quadrant means what? What's the A stand for? All, all what? All ratios are positive. Okay, so the sine, cos, and tan are all positive here. Okay, so this first quadrant goes from zero to 90. So if you look at here, 
from 0 to 90, we are positive. Okay, so we're, we're positive between 0 and 1. Okay, second quadrant then, what's positive here? Sine, right? So sine is positive in the second quadrant, which is from 90 degrees to 180. So sine is still positive from 90 to 180. So we're above the x-axis in those, these represent, I guess, the quadrants. So this would be like kind of quadrant one, this is quadrant two. And then what happens when we get below 180, sorry, we rotate past 180, between 180 and 270, is sine positive or negative there? In this quadrant here, is sine positive or negative? Negative, negative right? Only 10 is positive. So if you look at the chart, it then becomes a negative number. Okay, so I'm talking about the y-axis, so it comes in negative here, okay? So this is kind of like quadrant three. And then it rotates past 270 back to 360. And again, sine is negative in this in quadrant. So it kind of works like this. So what we're essentially doing is we're taking the values from the Cartesian plane and we're putting it onto, um, I guess, another Cartesian plane. Okay, so we're taking the values and creative weights. And then if, as you rotate, okay, so we do 360, and then you can go again. You go all the way again, get two, um, sorry, 360, 720, go around again, that'd be 1,080, and that would continue this wave, okay? So sine positive between 0, 180, and then negative between uh, 180 and 360, and then it repeats, okay? So you gotta know the base function, or the parent function. Okay, so next, do the next one. By the way, this is a, sign, a positive sign. So positive sign goes up and then down. If it was a negative sign, if this was negative, what would the negative do in the equation? Owen? Yes, okay, so two things. One, okay, that's one. We're talking about the rotations here. Perfect, How? what else? If you just look at the equation itself, what does the negative do in front of the function? You're absolutely right, though. It would reflect okay. it over the x-axis? Yeah, it would reflect over the x-axis, right? So if it was a negative sign, instead of going up first, it would go down first. And then it would go up to you and then down, okay? So it would be reflected. Okay, so if it was negative, it goes down, then up. And as Owen said, it would be going the other way, right? Because when we did negative angles, you count clockwise. So you would have negative and negative for sine here. Negative, 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 negative. And then going back this way would be positive, positive. So we get the positive and positive. Okay, okay so let's do, so I know that if it's sine is positive, it goes up first and then down. If it's negative, it's the opposite. It goes down and then up. And now we're gonna do cos. So we're, we won't be doing tan, by the way. Tan is a funny one. It goes, it goes like this. Sorry. We won't be learning tan, it goes, it's kind of weird. Okay, so we won't be doing that one. And some teachers don't teach it in grade 12, so don't worry about it. Okay, cos works a little bit different. Okay, it's, it's the same wave, it's just shifted. So let me start here. We have the A, so it's gonna be positive here in the first quadrant, I'll give you guys a minute. Use the same, that same values. So we're going from positive one to negative one and from zero to 360. Oh yeah, sorry Christian, I just saw the list there. Let's see if you guys can think about this. 
Cos is positive or negative in quadrant one? Positive, okay. What about quadrant two? Negative. So we're gonna go positive, negative, then negative, positive. So it goes positive, negative, negative, and then positive. Okay, so we have to draw something. Anyone wanna take a guess what it would look like on this table? Yeah. So it would go straight up to one, and then dip down under, so like the negative side at 90, and then continue down, and then it would go back up at the 270 above the one. Okay, so you're, you're very close. So you said down through here, yeah. and then up, okay? Yeah. But I can't go here. Okay, so you're, you're right. We're gonna fix something though. So you're right down, and then back up, and then over here, good. What did you get, Esther? Sorry? So, uh, good guess, no. It doesn't actually start on the x-axis. So start at a zero, so it would be on the bottom of 90. So here? Oh, no. Here? Yeah. Okay, but we want to start somewhere on the y-axis. You're right, it kind of goes through there. Deborah? Start at one. Yes, good. So it actually starts at one. This is our positive. Then it goes negative, still negative, and then back up to one. So it starts at one. So this would from remember from zero to ninety is quadrant one, and it's positive. And then in quadrant two, it goes negative for cos. So it starts at zero one, goes through. 0, 90, then we have a, whoa, that's too low. Then uh, 180 and negative one, then back up to the x-axis, and then positive again. And again, think about the quadrant. So this is quadrant one, where cos is positive. Quadrant two, Cos is negative. Quadrant three, it's still negative, but then in quadrant four, cos is now positive. Okay, so, and then it repeats itself, right? It would repeat over and over. So you end up getting the same wave, like it looks exactly the same. The starting points are different. That's all. Okay? For the sine, it starts at 0, 0. For cos, it starts at positive 1. Okay, so negative cos, reflect it. So if it was a negative cos, it would go the opposite way. So it starts here, goes up to a positive value, and then back down. So this doesn't actually make sense because it's correct. It be Ignore the quadrants when we're doing the negative. Okay, so if it was a negative cos, it would start at the bottom, then go up, and then back down. Okay, it gets reflected. Okay, so let's start the lesson.